walking on the floor. I usually do, dear. Yeah. <laughs> and I could try walking on the ceiling, but all the loose change will fall out of my pockets. <laughs> I've just mopped it. Are your feet clean? Well, they should be. I had a bath this morning. <laughs> <laughs> dear, 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 dear. There is the shopping and there is the bill. Whew, no wonder they call it inflation. One look at that puts the wind up you. Did I tell you to get all this? Yes, dear, I had a list. Well, I'm only asking because the last time you said you just kicked the shelf and bought whatever fell off. No. <laughs> no, that's what you told me to get, and you've got to cut down there. You're getting very extravagant. Uh, what? What is this? That's for our tea. I'm cutting down. Ah, I see. Right then. Right. What are you doing? I'm marking my off with a pencil. Oh, Terry, put it down. Come on. Oh. No, not my fault. Not my fault. No, no. No, no. He jumped. One of its ancestors must have been a salmon. Yeah. Fancied one last swim. And there we are. Dear, <clears throat> really. Look, I know I'm having a general clean-up round here, but you've no need to shampoo our kipper. Mm. You've ruined it now. Oh, so that's why you're dressed like the char lady. What would you like me to wear to do the cleaning? A ball gown? Well, why not? Then you could waltz through the washing. Together we could tangle through the tidying up. Ah. You and your ta-ta-ta lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, uh, did you get the decorating materials for the bedroom? Yes, and what about this? A uh, set of artist oil paint, palette and brushes. Mm -hmm. You're going to decorate the bedroom with those? No, 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 no. no, no I, I, bought, I bought them cheap in a sale. I thought it would be a nice surprise. Lovely. I've always wanted to try my hand at oil painting. No, not for you, silly. This is yours. A tin of emulsion and a four-inch brush. <laughs> what a super surprise. Well, my side of the family has always been more, more artistically stimulating. I mean, yours is better at doing things on walls, hmm? As a matter of fact, my father was quite a good sculptor. Yes, I remember your mother telling me he, was, he came from a long line of chiselers. <laughs> <laughs> now, all right, then. I will do the bedroom. Pity, though, I was going to paint your portrait. For the first time, I was going to get you down on canvas. First time you got me down on canvas was 30 years ago on a camping holiday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that you? <laughs> mm. Actually, dear, I mean, I bought, I bought this stuff because, well, when I was feeling a bit under the weather a few weeks ago, the doctor said I, I needed, I needed mental stimulation. Oh, yes, I remember you went out and had a scalp massage. No, no. <laughs> I bought this stuff because he examined me all over and said I was fit, but that I needed a hobby or something. Did the doctor put his finger on anything specific? Yes, that was very embarrassing. <laughs> But did he say why you needed a hobby? A man such as myself, June, in the prime of life, needs other interests besides work. Did the doctor say you were in your prime? Well, not exactly, but that's, I dare say that's what he meant, so I thought, now, what talent, what talent have I got that I could improve? Well, think, June, it's obvious, isn't it? Well? I'm thinking. Yeah, well, it's easy, it's easy. What was I good at when I was a kid? Aren't you a bit too old for roller skating? No. <laughs> not that, dear. Oh, Terry, you're not going to sit on the front doorstep and collect car numbers? No. <laughs> art, June, art. I have talented fingers. I should have used them years ago to start a career for myself. In art? No, I always wanted to work in a ladies' massage parlour. <laughs> <laughs> When I was about 16, I did a marvellous drawing of one of my girlfriends. She, she, <laughs> she used to pose for me in the, in the front room when nobody was about. <laughs> I see. And that was the first thing you ever drew? No, the second. The first was the curtains. <laughs> if you really want a hobby, Terry, there's an awful lot one's doing in the garden. Yes, well, while you're getting my tea, I think I'll start. I think perhaps possibly a nice landscape. What about the garden? Good idea. Thank you, June. A suburban garden at sunset by Terence Medford. There's an awful lot of weeding to do. All right, if you like, then fine. I'll make it woman weeding suburban garden at sunset. <laughs> now, where, where did you put those uh, cake baking tins? They're down there. Why? Oh, well, I'll put one to good use at last. Yes, yes, I, I think I could make a talented artist, June. You certainly look like one. Do you really think so? Yes, I do. A Toulouse Lautrec. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's typical. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I just got going on English garden at sunset and it starts pouring down the rain. Yeah. Well, let's have a look. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> 
Never mind. It's probably the first painting ever that started off in oils and finished off as a watercolour. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but old, old Arthur Potts from next door kept on looking over and making remarks. What does he know about painting? Oh, he made a mess creosoting his garden fence. He was probably trying to be helpful. Yeah. Well, I bet Whistler didn't have people looking over his shoulder saying, I don't like the look of your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him mowing his lawn earlier. Why not? It ruined my concentration. I wish you'd mow ours, darling. I shall soon need native bearers to get to the greenhouse. I mean, I mean, I mean, tell me, tell me. Did Rembrandt get pestered like this when he was trying to paint the Mona Lisa? Actually, he didn't paint the Mona Lisa. I expect he was probably too busy mowing his lawn. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's why she was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my half a kipper? I'm starving. If you remember, you dropped it in the bucket. But as you said, we had to economise. I've created a little masterpiece of my own. What? Your tea, sardine on toast by June Medford. <laughs> Ruin that, isn't it? Artist, artist wife at the model. I'm beginning to wish you'd never started this painting thing. You've made a mess all over the house. Well, it gives me something to do when I'm when I'm not doing anything. We've left stuff in the kitchen. Very nearly had turpentine noodle soup this evening. <laughs> I don't suppose I'd have noticed the difference. <laughs> and what about those paints and brushes in the bathroom? One never knows where inspiration might strike. <laughs> Some people read, others paint. Hey, that's my tea towel you're wiping your brush on. No, it's not, is it? Oh, is it? Terry, what do you call this? How about sunset in the tropics? It's not funny. Oh, Honestly, June, you've got June, stuff June, in June, June, don't, don't, don't go on, dear. No wonder Van Gogh cut his ear off. <laughs> but his wife was yapping in it all the time. I'm sorry, but you do get these fads and then I have to clear up after you. I mean, last year it was carpentry, and for two weeks we had wall-to-wall -wall sawdust. Oh, don't, don't exaggerate, June. I'm not. You ruined more timber last year than Dutch elm disease. <laughs> I made a very nice wooden cigarette box. Started out as a linen chest. <laughs> I like to whittle. And get the cigarette box open. Well, it, it was designed for people who are trying to give up smoking. <laughs> I, I wish you wouldn't criticise so much. See, I mean, you're ruining, you're destroying my creative urge. Oh, you already eaten me apple. There's no need to go bananas. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's it? Um, what's it supposed to be then? I'm, I'm calling it the Garden of Eden. I don't get it. Neither will Adam. Now you've eaten the apple. <laughs> Where's his fig leaf? It's autumn. Oh, <laughs> for heaven's sake, you go, go and finish painting the bedroom. This is my hobby. You find one of your own. Oh, I've got plenty already, thank you. Painting the bedroom, washing, cleaning. No, I meant something to do in the evening. Painting the bedroom, ironing, sewing. Oh, you, you, you need a proper hobby, June. I used to like ballroom dancing. I see that's coming back into fashion. Oh, uh, yeah, we used to go dancing in the starlight ballroom, didn't we, in the old days? When I could prize you away from the bar. I, I used to do four quick steps to the pint. <laughs> no, Terry, you could never do the quick step. You used to waltz a bit faster. Dancing, dancing, June, was in my blood. Well, you must have had very poor circulation then, because it never reached your feet. Oh. <laughs> All right, you can... Forget about, forget about ballroom dancing then, because you look damn silly doing it on your own. Actually, I've always loved classical music. You know, I took lessons when I was a girl. Lessons on what? No, if I tell you, you laugh. Yeah, of course I wouldn't. Of course I wouldn't. What, uh, what instrument was it? The cello. <laughs> 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 oh, the cello. You, you, you played the cello. Oh. Funny you never told me that before. Oh, well, no, and you can see why. 
Actually, I saw an ad in tonight's paper. Second-hand cello for sale. Well, it reminded me. Why not take it up again? I mean, I'd like you to have a hobby, June, besides bottling fruit. No, I don't think so. No, no, we'll get that cello. Yes, and I'll paint, and then later on we can have friends around, and you can give a recital, and I can make an exhibition of myself. <laughs> no, no, I'd, I'd like you. I'd like you to play that cello. In fact, I insist. How much is it? Seventy-five pounds. Oh, just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> I suppose you've never had lessons on the penny whistle, I suppose. No. Hmm. Aren't you going to finish painting the bedroom? Well, I've always regretted giving up the chair. I had a natural bent for it. Oh, you mean you were bow-legged? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was only joking. Yeah. No. Listen to him, look. If it is something you've always wanted to do, then we'll get that cello tomorrow and fix you up some lessons. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this really isn't bad. No, no, I think it's quite good. And who knows, this time next year, it could, it could be Sir Terry, Royal Academy. And his wife, Dame Droon, London Philharmonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, inspiring, beautiful. What a marvellous idea of mine to get a cello. Bravo, June! Bravo fortissimo! <laughs> That'd be great if she plays like that. <clears throat> oh, I'm in here, love. <clears throat> did, you, uh, did you manage to fix up the lessons? Yes, twice a week, starting tomorrow. Did I hear someone playing the cello? Oh, yes, I was just having a go on it while nobody was about. To... <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Come on, Terry, that wasn't you. Why not? I, I, I am a man of many facets, as I told you before. My facets are my biggest assets. I was, uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I was... It was a record. Yes, I was playing a record. To get an idea of what I'm expecting from you. Oh, no, darling, I'll never be able to play like that. Oh, be positive. You must have confidence, June. Confidence! I'm positive I'll never be able to play like that. <laughs> well, just do the best you can like I am. I mean, this may never be hung in the Louvre in Paris, but it'll look, look nice in the Louvre upstairs. <laughs> of Eden coming along. Not bad. I'm just working on the snake. I think I may add a few ladders. Then when it's finished, if we don't like it, we can play it. <laughs> <laughs> Those watermelons are very realistic. <laughs> yeah, it's not watermelons. It's, that's Eve looking over a bush. <laughs> They're a bit green, aren't they? So she was to start with. I mean, this is an abstract painting. They're full of deeper meaning. Oh, I see. What's the deeper meaning about that garden gnome? G garden gnome? That's, that's Adam. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but he is, um, he is a bit out of proportion with the rest of it, isn't he? Well, I mean, maybe he was. I mean, nobody ever met him, did they? I mean, I mean there weren't any people in Eden he could invite round to a garden party. Oh, well, all right, I'm only trying to show interest. I shan't say anything else. Good, you just concentrate on your own hobby. And another thing, they didn't have navels. Didn't they? <laughs> look, look, you, you just get on with the chillo. I mean, you've had it all day and you haven't even played it yet. Well, I need a few lessons first. It's been a long time. Ah, it's just like riding a bicycle. Once you've got the hang of it, well, you don't fall off. Mm, I'm not worried about falling off it. Mm. It's the music, you know, all those crotchets and quavers and oh, things. Oh, it's double dutch to me. I used to think that semi breve was only using one nostril. <laughs> You, you do remember how to play it, don't you? Well, more or less, but I was much younger then. Mm -hmm. The difficult bit is going to be getting it under my chin. Uh, June, June, you don't. <laughs> I haven't seen you pulling your leg, Terry. Oh. Don't worry, I do know what I'm doing. Oh, <laughs> good. Just think, a few lessons in a couple of weeks, and I'm looking forward to being inspired by your mellow cello. <sighs> So this is driving me up the wall. What was that, darling? I, I said three weeks you've been practising and it seems no time at all. <laughs> um, could one, dare one, ask a musical question? Yes, of course. What is it? Um, do you have to keep playing the same piece, dear? 
Well, Professor Kosnoff wants me to practice it as much as possible, and I really do think I'm beginning to get the hang of it. Oh, good. <laughs> from next door again. He, he said, could we close the windows? He can't stand the noise and... and... Yes, go on. He wanted to know if we were strangling the cat. <laughs> Take no notice of him, dear. I mean, he, he obviously has no feeling for classical music. It's the third time he's complained. You, you, you keep on scraping away, dear. You keep playing away, dear. <laughs> I'll, 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 go and, I'll go and give him a piece of my mind. Oh, no, Terry, not again. No, but this is the last straw. I mean, this time he reversed the charges. Oh, no, you keep playing. I'll, I'll go and sort him out. You're moaning about my wife's pain again. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Good luck to you, Terry. Come on in. <laughs> it's a pleasure to come to your rescue again, mate. Mm. Gin and tonic, as usual. Yeah, I think I need it. It's a marvellous remedy for earache. Why don't you give her a subtle hint that she can't play the damn thing? Like what? Set fire to it? <laughs> I mean, the trouble is, it was my idea. I mean, I encouraged her. Now I find that she has absolutely no ear for music at all. Oh, that must be the end of the piece. No, no, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't bank on it. No, no, she gets cramp in her thighs. <laughs> uh, she's probably jumping up and down now. She'll start scratching away in a second. You wait. <laughs> you know, if she played that in Trafalgar Square on New Year's Eve, she get arrested for disturbing the peace. Put your foot down, then. Who wears the trousers in your house? We've got a leg each. <laughs> You're taking this all very well, Terry, but uh, what are you going to do about it? Well, I haven't got the heart to discourage or upset her. I think the only thing I can think of is a, an anonymous letter to the Noise Abatement Society. No, you've just got to tell her. If you can convince her that she'll never really learn to play it, then you'll be doing her a big favour. Yes, I hadn't thought of it like that. I mean, I could, I could save her a lot of disappointment in the long run. I, mean, I will be telling her for her own good. Exactly. I'll, I'll tell her that either the cello goes or I go. Oh, no, no, perhaps you're right. I don't want to be homeless. No. <laughs> now, I'll tell her, I'll tell her firmly and gently, kindly and sweetly, in her own interest and in all sincerity. If she doesn't give it up, I'll wrap it round her tone deaf heroes. <laughs> June. June, I want a word with you. June, where are you? I'm up here. June? I'm having a bath. Won't be long. Did you want something? Oh, um, no, it'll wait. <laughs> no, no, it won't wait, no. No, no, I'd better get this over now, yes? And as she's in the bath, now is a good time to make a clean breast of it. <laughs> June, I did, I've decided to cancel your music lesson this evening. Look, look, we've been honest with each other for the past 25 years, and I have to tell you that you have absolutely no talent at all for playing the cello. I can tell by your silence that you're shocked, but... It, it'll save a lot of disappointment in the wrong, long run. You, no need to sulk, June. <laughs> Typical female. Pain, pain the martyr, the silent sufferer. Look, disagree with me if you think I'm being unfair. You're not crying, are you? Or is that the tap dripping? <laughs> Look, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm, I'm usually... Very kind. All right. I'm sorry. June? I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have said anything. 
All right, I... I apologise. Uh, there you are, darling. Put my cello in the car for me, will you? I'm late for my lesson. Oh. Jude, could I...? Yes, it's in there. Just put it on the back seat, would you? And um, please, Harry. The professor's a stickler for punctuality. Oh, gosh! Timmy! <laughs> Do be careful, you might damage it. Oh, it's time got this. I wish you'd taken up the flute. Oh, I won't be late, darling. Uh, June, when you come back, I, I would like to have a word with you. Will it wait till later? It'll wait. And you'll be waiting here when I get back? I'll wait. Oh, good. You can tell me all about it then. I can hardly wait. <laughs> June, that was your last music lesson. As a cello player, you'll be better off bottling fruit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, that's not kind. June, seriously, you're, you're getting bow-legged. <laughs> no, it's, it's too rude. Hello, darling. I'm back. June, I, I want you to sit down a moment. I've brought someone with me. Come in, Millie. Oh. Terry, I wanted to meet Mildred Smith. She's an old school chum of mine. We met at the professor's. She's just started taking violin lessons. Isn't that a lovely coincidence? <laughs> Millie, this is my husband, Terry. Oh, pleased to meet you. June gave me a lift. Do you know, I haven't seen her for years, and I only live round the corner from here, so I can pop in any time. How fine, fine. <laughs> and we're both learning to play, so we can encourage each other. Yeah. Yes, well, oh, I... darling, you've got the tea ready. How lovely. Oh, that is nice. He's so good. You know, he bought me the cello, and he's paying for all the lessons. Oh, that is generous. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> June, could you spare a moment in a minute, please? Millie, you go through to the living room and make yourself at home and I'll make us all a nice right. cup of tea. It's through there. Thank you. Oh, darling, I really do appreciate what you're doing, Terry. I was saying to Millie on the way home, there can't be another husband in the whole wide world as kind and considerate as you. Thank you, darling. It's a shame about Millie, you know. Huh? Well, she's divorced. She hasn't got anyone. No one at all. I mean, she's led the most miserable life. Yeah, June, I would like to I say... I told her that we'd been happily married for all these years, and you know, Terry, somehow I felt proud to be able to say that. <laughs> I told her how you'd put up with all my practising and you'd never complained. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> now then, darling, what was it you wanted to tell me? Oh, uh, well, it's nothing important. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. Come on, what was it? Well, June... I wanted to tell you that I, I've plans to redo the garden for you. Oh, lovely. You can tell us all about it over a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Bring the biscuits, would you? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the professor says that I need to practice a lot more. Oh, super. Um, you know, he's been so helpful. We really must ask him round one evening, you know, reciprocate. If I get him on his own, I'll retaliate. <laughs> I'm coming, dear, coming. Here we are. Here's a lovely cup of tea. Uh, thank you, June, but I can't stay long. Good. Oh. Uh, good, good, uh, good job I remember to get some biscuits, dear. <clears throat> well, offer Millie one, then. <sighs> oh, on, a, on a plate, Terry. <laughs> Are you a music lover, Terry? Well, I used to be until June. Uh, uh, June, would it be all right if I got and weed, weed the garden? Well, don't be unsociable, darling. Here's yours. What do you think of the cello, Terry? Well, it's not my cup of tea. Yes, it is. I've just sugared it. <laughs> You know, Millie's an art teacher at the high school. You could give Terry some advice. Show her that picture, darling. No, uh, it's all right, thank you. Oh, does he collect paintings? Yes, I'll just collect this one and this one. Oh, no, Terry, do show it to Millie. I think it's rather good. I'd love your opinion. After all, darling, Millie is a professional. All right. What do you think? Well, if you insist. Yes. Well? <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? Who asked your opinion? <laughs> well, I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, oh, June painted it, did she? Well, she was never very good at art at school. <laughs> I didn't paint it. It was nothing to do with me. It's Terry's. You mean you paid money for it? <laughs> well, as a children's painting, I suppose... It was, it was not painted by a child. No, it was done by an adult. An adult what? <laughs> I painted it. Oh, my goodness, I am so sorry. I was just trying to be constructive. What is it supposed to be? It's the Garden of Eden. I didn't think it was too bad, horticulturally. Uh, is that supposed to be Adam? 
He's a bit out of proportion, isn't he? Yeah. Well, leave it. I've got the message now, thank you. Adam seems to have a bandage around his chest. Well, so would you have. So would you have if you just had a rib off, wouldn't you? After all, it is his first effort. Mm. You know, I see Terry as a primitive. You leave my personal habits out of this. I don't need, I don't need any excuses made for me. You, you two get on with your fiddling. I'm going to go out and garden and burn this. Oh, no, darling, please don't do that. Why not? Well, you know how the neighbours hate bonfires. I'm sure Mildred meant her criticism to be constructive, Terry. Of course I did. He's a bit oversensitive, isn't he? You didn't have to give up painting completely. No, I can't afford the paint anymore. He gets bored very easily. Shall we carry on? The last time I practiced, the man next door complained. Well, what happened? Terry went round there and told him off, so we don't have to worry about the neighbours. Actually, <laughs> they've moved away to Torquay. Did you know that, Terry? Yes. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just that I miss him. <laughs> Darling, what is it? What's the matter? Nothing, I'm just having a cup of tea and an aspirin. Make it two. I think I will, yeah. Mm. Oh, sorry. Do you want a cup of tea? No. I think I want an aspirin. It's Millie. She's not very good on the violin, is she? <laughs> well, since you mentioned it... Look, Terry, I, I don't want to upset you, but I must say this. I don't think I'm very good either. Well, now... Oh, darling, I don't know how to tell you this. I mean, considering you bought me the cello and you've encouraged me and everything, but would you be very upset if I... if I thought about giving it up? <laughs> Terry! <laughs> Terry! Oh, oh, darling, please listen. I, I know it was your idea and I know you wanted me to have a hobby, but if I said I don't think I'll ever learn to play it, what would your reaction be? Uh, uh, evening, Argus. Terry, I mean, if I did consider giving it up, what would you say? I'd like to put in an advertisement. Yes, I'll hang on. Terry, darling, I'm trying to tell you something. Hello? Hello? If I did want to give up the cello, what would you say? Hello? Uh, second-hand cello for sale. <laughs> no reasonable offer refused. <laughs> One lady owner, low mileage. Why didn't you say so before? All this time and you really didn't think I could play it? Well, let's put it this way. Owner's husband willing to deliver within radius of 200 miles. Oh. <laughs>